Let's rank some KISS albums. Okay, so recently I completed what I would call my classic KISS record collection. Um, I showed in a previous video where I acquired Love Gun. I showed how that was my first rock and roll album that I ever purchased as a little boy of around 11 or 12. Um, I've shown Kiss. I love Kiss. So I thought, hey, let's rank the classic Kiss albums. Now, let's define our terms. I'm not talking makeup years class. I'm not talking makeup years versus non makeup years because that's different. I'm talking classic Kiss lineup. The original four members versus everything else. So let's call them, uh, we'll call it Kiss OB, Kiss Original Band. Now, I'm not going to cut, you know, I'm not going to do the splitting of hairs where you say, well, so and so really didn't play on that album. I'm talking albums with the original four members represented. Or back in the day, we didn't know. You know, we got an album out. It had Peter, Paul, Gene, and Ace on there, and it was a Kiss album. Who knew about the behind the scenes? Who recorded what? Who was drunk and never came to the studio? Or who was doing this and never came to the studio? Who we played on this? Not digging into that. I'm just saying, you look at the album. There's four members on there: Peter, Paul, Gene, and Ace, and it is classic Kiss. That's also going to therefore include, you know, later reunion. Psycho Circus. Because if you start doing with the makeup years, then you've got to go in and you got to pull in Monster and stuff like that. Um, and Sonic Boom, which is great, but you know, it's easy to do this. Let's say original band, everything else. And the everything else, there's so many more albums in that time frame. I'm also excluding um, solo albums, because yes, they had the original members, and they, yes, they were with makeup, but that wasn't Kiss albums. Regardless of what they're labeled as, only one member played on each so I'm also excluding those but at first I thought I'll do the best I'll do the top five but why not just rank them all so anyway let's get to it I thought this is just for fun um, now you also have to kind of think what when you rank something there's so many ways you can and it's so you know any everybody has their own opinions everybody has different ways that they rank everybody is looking from a different angle I will say that the way I look at it is from memories. These are things that when I think back at these Kiss albums, which one stands out as like my go-to album? Which one stands out as my most listened to album back when I was younger? Nowadays, if I were to go and I had an itch to listen to Kiss, what album would I grab first? The other day, yesterday, day before yesterday, I pulled out Lick It Up. When it comes to the non-makeup years, and then I played uh, Animalize after that. When it comes to the non-makeup years, my go-to album is usually Lick It Up. Um, and so, you know, you got that. You've got those things that are like, just what is it that draws you? So in this case, I'm like, how do I rank these? Quality of production, quality of songwriting, you know, people get into this stuff, uh, you know this and that aspects of the technical issues of music no what makes me happy what do I get drawn to the quickest what albums have the fondest memories to me that cause me to therefore go back and review them and listen to them for the hundred and fiftieth time you know it's just over and over and over which ones do I go to for that and if, so and then I rank them from there it's really tough when Kiss was the original band that I listened to for the longest time and still listen to, and it's really tough. It's almost like you're trying to rank your babies. It's like, I love that album, but how do, do I love it a little less? It's really tough. So take it for what it is today because tomorrow it's probably different. It all depends on how I feel today. So I'm not going to say a whole lot about them, maybe a memory here or there if I can. Um, I'm going to start Psycho Circus. Now, I love this album. It's a great album, but, you know, it's not my go-to album. So let's put this at the bottom. Um, I thoroughly enjoy this album. Again, I'm not dissing any any album. I love all Kiss, and uh, I'm not one of those people that hates this album because they sound like I love The Elder. It's it's a Kiss album. It's different. So I'm not one of those people. You're not going to get that from me. You're getting from me 
I love them all, and this is the order I would play them in if I felt like going on a KISS marathon. Psycho Circus would probably be at the bottom, even though tomorrow it might be at the top. Dynasty, again, this was the first tour I saw them on. This album has so much memories to me. I played this album. I don't care if it had a disco sound. I love every song on this album. I have connections and memories, fond memories of every song in this album. It's closer to the bottom only because I have a light, slightly fonder memory on another album. Really tough. This one I wanted to put higher. Um, but again, you gotta choose would be the follow-up to that. Again, another album. I played this more this year than any other Kiss album. This is usually a, one of my go-to albums. The memories on this one outweigh probably Dynasty, which is why it's one higher. Um, and yes, it's poppier. It's it's more. Uh, I just I I probably know all the lyrics and sing along to it. it so, you know, just everything about this brings tickling feelings to my body. And so I used to wear this out when it was when I was younger and still love it. Again, why is it lower in the ranking? Because somebody had to be there. Tomorrow it might be higher. Now, I've mentioned this before, rock and roll over. Now this is a classic. How can you put that? That's a classic. That's that's one of that's got all their big hits. Well, because this to me, and I didn't. Oh, also, I'm not including any kind of live albums in here. But this to me is weak in comparison to the songs when you heard them live. All the songs on here, I absolutely love. And I mentioned this when I got this a couple months ago. When I I said, you know, I revisited this. This was always a weak album to me, and um, it just didn't feel right. I went back and listened to it and I said, it's got all the great songs. The songs on here are absolutely great. But when they were played live on the live albums that you heard, they sounded greater. So you get used to those more so. It makes this feel a little weak. There's not a really a weak song on here, per se. But when you compare them in what's in your mind, live version versus this version, it's weaker. So I put this one a little lower down this, the ranks. Shock some people, Destroyer. Destroyer is typically most people's favorite album it's not my favorite album i absolutely love the album um flame and youth all the oddball songs you know that they're not the ones everybody goes to um are the ones that i remember listening to this all the time and loving all of the what would be considered more the b-side type songs not so much beth i mean you know it's cool live and everything but all the other songs on here are are the ones that I get drawn to and sadly there's just not as many of those as on other ones I mean again the live song versions live versions of these songs Detroit Rock City King of the Nighttime World God of Thunder outweigh the feeling on this album so to me and shout it out loud things like that sound much better live so these those tracks are almost nullified in the sense that I'd rather hear them live but you got Flaming Youth and Sweet Pain and Do You Love Me and Great Expectations, which I think are great songs. You don't hear them live that much at all. Um, but those are the songs that really draw me to this album. But when I weigh them against all of the other tracks and all the other albums and how they rank as far as number of songs that I really, 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 really want to hear over and over and over, this one falls a little lower. The first Kiss album, this one was a tough one. I had to pick in the top four. I had to go, you know, somewhere. And this is a tough one because this really is, it's, it's, these top four are going to be, they could be easily slit, slid around. Like, I love this album. It's got a lot of the classics. Same thing though. These songs are still to this day played heavily. A lot of these songs are. And they do sound better live. So there is a little bit of, you know, taken off for that. Um, but still, this is where it started. This is when you listen and you hear this young band with this raw music and this attitude that uh, it just comes through. It oozes through. You feel the energy. You know that, hey, you know, this is something different. Of course, they go on to play these songs live and they're amazing. I still love this album. I still play this album more frequently than some of the other ones. Hotter Than Hell. Now, back in the day when this came out, I always found this to be a weird kind of a darker album uh going blind and, and and just some of the songs in here were so different from the other stuff that they did but um 
that actually drew it to me. And when I say darker, I'm not talking, you know, scarier or, you know, more demonic. I'm just talking darker as in sludgier. It just, they felt kind of moodier. I don't know. It's hard to say. Memories are memories. And I remember going through a phase in life where this became my favorite Kiss album. For a long time, I couldn't get enough of this. I played it all the time. So the memories are there. For that time in my life, I loved this. The, the songs were different, and I couldn't get enough of them. So I played this all the time. And still, so this would be my number three go-to album. My number two go-to album would be the roughly around the same time release, Dress to Kill. Again... All the songs on here are the classics. A lot of the songs on here are the ones you still hear live. Uh, overall, though, all the songs on here I could listen to over and over and over and over and over and over. And I do. It's one of those albums that I go to all the time. Um, and some of these songs you know you don't always hear live, but you get Two Timer, Room Service, Ladies in Waiting, Rock Bottom, Come On and Love Me, every, Anything for My Baby, just she you know this is the songs that you do hear a lot of these and these are a part of the classics that they still play but it's just great stuff and surprise surprise my first number one out would be love gun only because again it's the first kiss album i bought again it's the one i played the most before having any other kiss albums and again it is just that nostalgic to me to where the memories draw me to it and if i'm just thinking hey let's listen to a kiss album from the makeup years i do tend to get drawn to this one um again it could change tomorrow but and maybe it's because it's so new in my collection and i've been revisiting it lately but honestly this is the one that started it all for me this is probably still one of my higher ranking in my mind and in my memories one of the higher ranking kiss song kiss albums that uh i is my go-to album and uh and so that's it it, 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 like I say, all of that could change tomorrow. It could be dependent on by how I feel tomorrow. But for the most part, those are what I would consider my rankings of how I see uh, my go-to albums because of the memories that they bring me from the years of listening to them. Anyway, tell me what yours are. Comment below. Let me know. Disagree with me. Agree with me. Let me know. It's nice to hear from you. Thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you next time. Rock on.